The history of Polish literature starts with a hymn, Bogu Rodzica, which was sung in the 13th century and first written down in 1407. It is considered to be Poland's first anthem. Mikołaj Rey, poet and prose writer, is regarded as the father of Polish literature. His most famous turn of phrase, dating from 1552, proudly declares A niechaj narodowie wżdy postronni znają, iż Polacy nie gęsi, iż swój język mają. The first writer of major Polish works in poetry and prose, Rey was also the founder of 17 villages and a frequent visitor to the court of King Sigismund I. Alexander Fredro is considered Poland's greatest author of stage comedies. He also wrote famous nursery rhymes, including Monkeys in the Bath and Paweł and Gawel. They still make children and adults laugh to this day. During the 120 years when Poland disappeared from the map of Europe, Polish poets fought to keep the language alive, writing masterpieces in exile. During the so-called Great Emigration, Paris became a literary hub for these expatriates, providing a refuge for great romantic poets like Adam Mickiewicz, Juliusz Słowacki, Zygmunt Krasiński and Cyprian Kamil Norwi. Even though Poland did not officially exist during the partitions, the first Nobel Prize in Literature to a Polish author was awarded to Henryk Sienkiewicz in 1905 for works written in Polish. His most famous novel, Quo Vadis, was an international bestseller. Bolesław Prus was a Warsaw-based journalist who published his novels in installments in newspapers. His most popular work was The Doll, which was serialized for three years before it was issued as a book in 1890. A serious competitor to Sienkiewicz in the Nobel Committee's deliberations was Eliza Orzeszkowa, a pioneer feminist who also campaigned for the assimilation of Poland's Jewish minority. Another woman who became a leading Polish writer was Maria Dombrowska, the author of the family saga Nights and Days. Five times nominated for the Nobel Prize, she never won it. Władysław Stanisław Raymond was a railway clerk. To stave off boredom, he started to write. He won the Nobel Prize in Literature in 1924, but due to ill health, never collected the award. His major works are the novels The Promised Land, 1899, and Peasants, published in four volumes in the years 1904 to 1909. Julian Tuvim and Jan Brzechwa are other famous authors for children. Both poets had Jewish roots and wrote nursery rhymes, funny stories and satirical works. Tuvim's Locomotive and Brzechwa's Wacky Ducky and the Academy of Mr. Klex are still favourites with kids. Isaac Bashevis Singer was born at the beginning of the 20th century in a very religious Jewish family. A son of a rabbi, he wrote his novels and stories in Yiddish. He described the colorful life of pre-war Jewish shtetls. The world that perished in the Shoah is thankfully preserved in his works, rewarded in 1978 with the Nobel Prize in Literature. A renowned author of children's books was the Jewish pediatrician and pedagogue Henrik Goldschmidt, better known by his pen name Janusz Korczak an educational innovator, social activist and founder and director of a Warsaw orphanage, he is considered an early champion of children's rights. His entire life was devoted to his youngsters and he refused to abandon them when they were sent to the German death camp Treblinka in 1942. Bruno Schulz was a graphic artist, painter and writer. His visual imagination is very much present in his short story collections the Street of Crocodiles and the Sanatorium under the Sign of the Hourglass. As a Jew, he was sent to the Drohobich Ghetto, where he was shot and killed by a German soldier in 1942. Zofia Kossak Strutska lived and worked as a writer in Warsaw. She co founded Zegota, the only government supported resistance organization dedicated to saving Jews from the Holocaust. She is the author of Protest, appealing to the population to help the Jews. Kossak Strutska received the title of Righteous Among Nations posthumously. 
The same title was awarded to the poet Czesław Miłosz, who emigrated after the Second World War to the United States. After receiving the Nobel Prize in Literature, he returned to Kraków, the hometown of another great poet, Wisława Szymborska. Famous for her irony and wit, Szymborska became the first female Polish writer to win the Nobel Prize. The depths of the communist era in Poland were vividly described in the 1954 Diary of Leopold Tyrmand, a Polish Jew fascinated by Western popular culture and jazz. His travels brought him to Israel, where his mother lived, before he eventually emigrated to the United States. The poet Zbigniew Herbert is responsible for an important literary innovation. His literary device and hero, Mr. Cogito, the subject of poems spanning many collections. Herbert, also an essayist and playwright, received Israel's only international literary award, the Jerusalem Prize for the Freedom of the Individual in Society. The futurologist and science fiction writer Stanislav Lem is a different case. Lem was fascinated by new technologies such as robotics, which he described in tales of space travel and scientific discovery. His novels Solaris and the Astronauts, along with the short story collection Fables for Robots, have been translated into 41 languages. Richard Kapuściński was one of the world's most famous and highly regarded foreign correspondents. His in-depth reportage from Africa, South America and Asia, where he covered wars, revolutions and coups, were published in book form and elevated the genre to the status of literature. Andrzej Sapkowski is the creator of one of the most popular heroes of the fantasy genre, the monster hunter Geralt of Rivia. Sapkowski's world-famous book series, The Witcher, has been spun off into video games and a popular Netflix series. The second female Polish writer to be awarded the Nobel Prize in Literature is Olga Tokarczuk, one of Poland's most popular contemporary authors. She used the prize money to set up a foundation under her own name, which will support Polish culture and arts at home and abroad. As far as Polish literature is concerned, all of these writers are just the tip of the iceberg. This was read for you by David French.